Hi guys, Jim Whitey Tells. This is a two part series again for the Maserati Quattroporte. It's the fourth generation model, late 90s, early 2000s vehicle. The episode is likely to be pushing 60 minutes in one video, in one vlog. So it's a two part. If you haven't already seen part one, be sure to check back. Find in the description to the video down below, or you'll find a link to it at the end of this vlog. You'll see the paint condition, the severity of the defects on the vehicle. The car's booked in for the white detail. The rest of the video, is gonna show you is the last part of the paint correction, the paint refining, various other bits and bobs, but let's start the show. A nice 50-50 here on the boot lid, just seeing some of this with the lights turned off. Uh, one area to, or a couple of areas to revisit though. I'll just mark that whilst I can see it. Inside there, the remains of a bird bomb. Bird etching sunk into the lacquer, needs digging a bit more. It's a really rich colour. seen from the time lapse starting to work across the back end now light clusters have come up a treat They're very nice not too cut up either they've responded well they'll just be refined during the refining stage as per normal as we look on the panel obviously yet to get into here we have see what you can spot as we go across as we go across as we go across as we go across as a blend so this half is different paint to that half you can see how this is cut quite nice it is very little in the need of refining that is sort of hazy and a bit bloomy this is responding a lot different um, same applies for the top surface here if we use the multi-match behind me now the light I was a bit worried about this area it's cleaned up extremely well but then again ready there, there is the blend from where they join the paint. Don't go too far on this because you've got two sharp edges. As you can probably see on the screenshot now, the time lapse you've seen, I've had the tape on the bottom ledge here just to protect this edge a little bit to take the pressure off from going through. Two sharp edges. If I can get the rest of this like that, on to a winner. It's about dinner time now. Look at this nonsense on the sill. Saving the worst till last, always. Bumpers are probably worse off actually in there, still yet to be done. Abrasions, rub marks, deep scratches. As we track down, it's taking some big guns to make some impact on this. It's not gonna be perfect. There's a couple higher up, it's actually better than I thought it was going to be. A couple higher up there, I'm leaving that. Not risking that any further. details on the front end being made. To be fair, the front bumper, we ought to have advised, and seen the car beforehand, but advised that the front bumper is painted. There's a lot of damage on there and chips. So we just have to do what we can and work with what we've got. In the meantime, the trim sections, front and rear, everything has pretty much come off the car. I've got perhaps 30, 40 minutes now to 
cleanse these, trim these, trim them as in protect them with DR trim, uh, and maybe look at polishing the Maserati badge, uh, the bright work as well. Side repeaters removed earlier on and they've been given, this has been done, this is has, look at the difference in colour. It's all snarled up with polish residue and it's looking dull. If I can get that, that colour. Both repeaters done now. I think actually this one's been replaced. They are two different colours. But nevertheless, it was a worthwhile job cleaning it up and look smarter, sharper. This is the face of a man who's bored of polishing bumpers. Correct. Correct Mundo. <laughs> Fiddly though, aren't they? Fiddly. Bit of correction on the lenses, the front indicators there. This one obviously done. This one next up. remaining trim pieces from the car is going to be the front grille. Terry's just currently working around the edge of the bonnet where this sits. I've just been inside the slats with a little APC and a foam swab to cleanse the black. We'll then follow with the on trim. But first, the first is worth doing the chrome work, the outer edge, having this all polished up before the trim dressing goes down. Do you reckon this plastic insert comes out? I think it does, it's had to go on in. It must come out. That was difficult. Oh, beauty! That was easy. So the central part comes out. That's the engine dressed. It's been further cleansed. There's a few tacky areas that just needed a bit more work. It's been dressed, dressed. It's been dressed now. Next, it needs the whole exterior blowing down to eliminate polish and dust lint, which of course, which as you can see, there's a lot of yet to be refined. Obviously I wouldn't have done that before refining. The reason the engine is dressed at this point, before refining, not after refining, but a lot of the dressing spills over onto the adjacent panels, so it's gonna be blow the whole car down, IPA the whole car to start fresh, a clean slate, and then start refining and blow out any dust from the engine bay that may have gone in.
6 p.m. Thursday, refiner's gonna go through till Friday lunch. That's not happened for a while. Had a bit of a nightmare over the bonnet with refining. Um, went to the old Faithful, Sonax, perfect finish on the white Rubez pad, but it just said no, it was sort of cementing, it was almost buffer trailing, you can see each line that the polisher had made. It's The paint's dry, in the polish it just hasn't got enough oil or lubricant in it to deal with it, so switched. Switched to M201 Crosh Chemi. This is actually what was used in some of the earlier footage where the paint had been refined as a test, including the 50-50 that I did on the boot lid. Don't often show a great deal of the refining stage. It's normally a time lapse up on the top of the cabin up there of us cracking on. It's just nice to get the job finished at this point. So you can see I've been over this side, but what you can also hopefully see is a lot of dusting, a lot of lint and polished dust that's been thrown off. Now what do we do first? Do we use the duster? Nope. That's my scratch. As stupid as this sounds, this can actually be quite abrasive. If we look, there's a section of a refined bit here, which is the earlier refining. This all still needs refining now. But that looks pretty good. So watch this. If I brush this over, I can see it to the eye. Can you see the marring that's been induced? from a feather duster. But the clue's in the name. It's a duster, it's full of dust typically. It's what we use during the cutting to eliminate fragments of polish and clumps of whatever else. So this in the refining stage can be lethal. That stays to one side to wipe down the panels that haven't yet been refined. So with this, we need to blow. We need to blow this off without any contact to eliminate the dust, and certainly what we don't want to do is start buffing on top of this. This is going to trap all the contamination between the cloth and similar to the boot lid, you're going to mark it, you're going to mar it. So using the vehicle blower, we're going to blast it, but first we're actually going to take the tape off first. This can have hidden dust and clumps of polish underneath, so tape off everywhere we've just been, front and the side, don't need that anymore on the side because this will be done with the door open, and then we blow. And then we buff. If I bring you back in quickly, you can see now we're good to go. This, there's very little chance of marks being induced now, because it's just the residue on the surface. Did not plan to be here this time, if I'm honest. But to be honest, if I'm honest, to be honest, with a little bit of music, the odd cup of tea, sometimes it has to be done. Especially when the results are as rewarding as this. It's gotta be one of the biggest turnarounds this here for a long, long time. You forget actually how bad it was, what I ought to do during the after footage is keep flashing up before examples of the paintwork to really show you the difference again because I, me personally, I've actually forgot because we're so used to looking at this now. But anyway. Spend all day at the front end here doing little touch-ups, but what I will just show is a bit of damage down there, low down. Definitely worth hiding that with a little touch-up. Oh god, didn't he used to recording? 
A fair few people email actually still message or call about the touch-ups, where are these from? Fisher Motor Factors, Lincoln. Tap into Google, speak to the guys, they'll be more than happy to help and ship color coded paint toucher pens to yourself. Same area again, without looking too close, that's definitely taking the edge off. A lot better. Moving on to the interior, we have a dirty half, clean, dirty, clean. Nice 50-50 there. On the bottom of the door, you need some gloves on, sir. Customer turning up soon with two Mercedes for next week, an S-Class and a C-Class. Today, a lot of interior work happened yesterday. It's difficult filming interior work. It's hard to have the grounding for a camera. It's a bit sort of close quarters. The two of us are on the interior. Come up a treat. And today is paint protection, tooth pickery, glass. Get all the badges and stuff back onto it. Reassembly. Final wipe down. Cup of tea and enjoy. In case I guess there's any risk of going too far under, picking up the smallest bit of contamination and it's then trapped on your pad and your cloth. And now I suppose we better start building the back up, starting with some grillage.
perhaps it may not be the sexiest Maserati or the best looking car to some, but certainly one of my top three turnarounds, I think, of all time, what he does. We received the car blind, it came from London, it's come up from London, um, part of a, a collection for a, a very good customer of mine. Albeit a low mileage example, 32,000 kilometers on the clock, it's a late 90s, early 2000s vehicle. There's been a lot of bad contact and abrasions left on the vehicle. I forget now the condition it arrived in. What I ought to do with the after footage you're about to see is actually flash back or maybe have some 50-50 side-by-side -side comparisons of before, after, because this really has come a long way. Okay, there may be scars and bruises, um, chips or scabs or scars on the bumpers, the lower sill. Not so much the lower sill, but certainly the front bumper. But for what we were given, the vehicle now couldn't sit any nicer. Engine bay treatments, interior treatments, wheels off work, the full major paint correction. I'm gonna say in terms of defects to remove, possible defects to remove, 98.9%, 99% defect removal. It's had a bit of paint work. It's been interesting to sort of match up what maybe have been done when the sides of the vehicles with the near side, this side, rear wing uh, as an exception. They responded a lot different to the tops of the vehicle, so the bonnet, the roof, and the boot, very much different in the cutting and refining. So today is Sunday, the 11th of November. The vehicle will be picked up in the morning, Monday, before I get started on two Mercedes next week. Today I've actually had to cancel some family plans to make sure the vehicle is finished on time. I was left short, to be honest, and it's difficult to book any social commitments in a weekend when you have a white detail booking because it takes what it takes to get the job complete. So without going on too much more and a blabbing, I shall let the rest of the video now do the talking, the after footage of the Maserati Quattroporte. If you've enjoyed the video, if you've been impressed by the turnaround, give it a thumbs up, hit that thumbs up down below, like the video, subscribe if you aren't ready for more content in the future. And if you know of a friend, a family member, a contact, colleague, associate that may be interested in watching this episode, uh, it may be new to them, they may have a vehicle that could benefit from this themselves, then do feel free to share. So thanks again to Terry for his efforts this week. Thank you to you for watching. Thank you to the community for the support. Back on soon, take care. Goodbye.
That's like showroom. Wow.